wondering, fearing, doubting. What is up, YouTube land? It has been nine years since we played Eternal Darkness on this channel. Uh, you can easily find it by either searching Eternal Darkness on here or looking at our playlist. We have a playlist of it. Uh, so Trevor went through nine years ago and played, uh, I think the Chaturga. No, Zelotov. The Zelotov. Zelotov is the green god. And yeah. we're going to be doing the red god this time. Which is Chaturga. So you can go through this game three times. Uh, there are three different, like, small different path variants. And this is the third time through. Yep. So we're going to be doing the third playthrough, which gives you the secret ending. There's not a whole ton different, uh, with it, but... I really wanted to play this game again. Yeah, this, and since it's been so long, it's like... This is one of my favorite games of all time. Oh, yeah. Top ten, like, of all games. I this, would say that I, this is probably a top ten game for me, but if it's on my top ten, this is the most flawed of my favorite games. This game is great, but there's a lot of... There's some problems with it, but I just love it despite it. Everything about it is just, I think, is perfectly executed for what it is. I mean, it, it's one of those things like, okay, is... The Godfather, my favorite movie. No. Is it, like, one of the most perfect in the way it's set up? Yes. But is it my favorite? No. no. And it's the same thing. Like, there might be a more, like, perfectly made game, but sometimes the stars just align, and uh, this weird company, Silicon Knights, uh, who is infamous for making Too Human for the 360, spending just hundreds of millions of dollars to make this piece of crap game... Uh, getting sued to high heaven because of just awful business decisions and, and folding. They What they specifically did was that they uh, got the Unreal Engine and they were unhappy with the state it's in for some reason and they were like, we are not we don't want to use this engine. We're going to nullify our contract. But then they made their own engine and they just blatantly stole the assets from Unreal Engine. So that's why they got sued and like, that's why 2Human had to be like pulled from shelves and they had to pay so much money. Like, you can't do that. <laughs> That's one of those things, whenever we get a copy of Two Human in, um, people will, like, once in a while be like, hey, did you hear this game is, uh, you know, was, like, banned or whatever? It's super rare. Not Flesh. super, really. Bound they got a lot of copies out there before that happened. And no one wants it, because it's not like a, a hidden gem. Yeah. It's just, it it's a hidden so piece of crap. Ago. It was like they pulled it off the shelves, before like, a year time. into it. So before it's like, humanity. dude, whatever. Yeah. But talking about when Silicon Knights was good, their first, it's not their first game, but their first breakout success was uh, Legacy of Kane, Blood Omen. And then they didn't make anything in that six year gap until this game. Oh wow, really? And yeah, Legacy of Kane came out in 1996 and this game came out in 2004. And then Silicon Knights went on to make Twin Snakes, which is a very divisive game in 2004. This was 2002, right? Yeah. Okay. And then after Twin Snakes, uh, Silicon Knights ended their partnership with Nintendo because they didn't like the Wii. And then they made Two Human. And it absolutely crippled their company. And then they eventually made X Men Destiny. And it sold like crap. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know if that game's good. Like, we get it in with the store once in a while. Uh, My family this is also one of the weirdest exclusives I can possibly imagine. To it. it just, it, it's Bear perfect as a GameCube game, but it's so weird that it's a GameCube This game is pure is lightning in a bottle. If you want to look up the definition of lightning in a bottle, it's a picture of this game. Yeah. They were, um, the owner of Silicon Knights came out several years ago, maybe five, seven years ago, and wanted to crowdfund a, uh, A sequel to this game and I was like please God no Seriously. and luckily the guy is literally like a shyster and like I don't know if he ever even planned on doing it but uh it did not happen because he's a shyster I, I, for, I don't know his name but I watched I watched some videos on him and uh simply two based Alex. Oh. 3.33. Gotta remember that number. I literally can't believe they do that. It is the very first puzzle we have to do in this game. Remember 3.33. Hello. Mr. 
Alexandra Roibus. Um, yeah, who's this? This is Inspector Lewis. Whoever the Lugas, voice actor for her was, I hope she got paid decently. You, but Pretty good. There's been an accident. Also, GameCube specifically. I'll be on the next flight out. Xbox was a stronger system in terms of graphics in general, but GameCube, when it was done right, had really nice looking games. Yeah. And a very unique style. Yeah, the PS2 was the weakest by oh, far. The, the biggest problem with the GameCube is that it just had mini discs, trip? which like had like uh, one fifth yes, the, the so, uh, disc size of these. Yes, my condolences. This kind of just is most hamper, even hampers this game because they reuse areas constantly. Brighter circumstances. Yes, it is. In weird Can ways, and I know this game was made before course, it, but I'm getting like way. Indigo Prophecy vibes. I must warn you. Uh, I know. In, I know. Yeah, Indigo Prophecy similar. was made like after it, but. I'm this game looks better than Indigo Prophecy, yes. but it's, it's very similar in ways. Maybe it's also the fact that you're starting out, like, at a crime scene and all that stuff. Yeah. But just for right now, I'm like, And, like, a man. brutal murder under mysterious yeah. circumstances. Miss Roybus, is that your grandfather, Edward? Yes, it's him. He's wearing our family ring. Me. <laughs> I don't understand. Why are Speaking you showing of me this? It's Can't you check demo records or something? Amazing What's wrong with you? emulation nowadays, like how you can make I'm, everything all super HD and everything. It's my job, lady. You're the only living relative. We, and no, we can't check dental records. There's no head. There's no head. No, none of this makes sense. There's no sign of intrusion, and there was certainly a lot of force used here. I have never seen anything like this in my 20 years on the force. Also, not. Not yeah, including no the, for the awful body. monsters. And what's left doesn't say much. But, uh, Ugh, I would totally live in this house. Do. Obviously, if it wasn't, like, well, super you cursed. Find out who did this. But this, uh... I'm not leaving Rhode Island until you do. There must be some clue in this old mansion. So I was looking up who, do, who the voice actor was of Alex, answers. and it's Jennifer Hale, so who still I. is a voice actor today. Oh, nice. She answers. just does so much stuff. She was the voice actor of Ash in Overwatch, uh, Miss Kane in wow, the Powerpuff cool. Girls, the, the new one. I'm just briefly looking through it. Wow. Shocked by her grandfather's mysterious death and frustrated at the incompetence of the local police, Alex vows to uncover the truth. She decides to search the mansion, the place where Edward conducted his research. If there was a tie to his past, and possibly a tie to his murder, it would be here. Yo, I, I forget if you go to it right away, but the, um... The, what you call it, the uh, library. I would keep some of it al the library and make the rest of it a uh, game room. And, or like game library. Holy crap, this place rules. Uh, so this is another clue. Uh, time is permanently set to 3.33. You'll, oh, that's good. You'll see it all over the house. Like any clock, it's always at 3.33. Do you want me to read these or not? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Make the rats. That dresser key we don't use for a while. Man, the the I the atmosphere for this game is an eleven out of ten. Yeah, it is just a, a amazing. The looming grandfather clock seems to stand ominously in the corner, gazing on this empty room with an almost patriarchal air. Adjust the clock. Should she adjust? So it's interesting how this uh, game is presented. Uh, when you play as Edward way later in this game, uh, he sees a ghost of Maximilian, and he literally just tells him to set the clock to 333. But the first time we had to do this, we just had to figure it out ourselves. So it's it's interesting how the back and forth works. Yeah. All right, so there's the Tool of Eternal Darkness, but let's grab the other things. Yes, the Gladius. So this is the uh, weapon. I mean, it's the same weapon that we're about to play the chapter. Uh, pretty crazy. Uh, literally a 2,000-year-old weapon. An age page set of the glass frame hangs on the wall. An insane scribbling covers the page. Incomprehensible to Alex. Perhaps if Alex had some kind of tome, it could be deciphered. Yeah, so before you touch the eternal dark, uh, the Tome of Eternal Darkness, you can't read the pages in it. It's, you can't, there's no consistency. It just looks like maddening, like, scribbles. Should Alex read the book?
I just, want, I just want to imagine the insane ramblings is like the average like 4chan post <laughs> where it's just like a bunch of random I words. I no knowledge of what was to come, <laughs> nor did I care. So yeah, that uh, that little flashback that she just had was basically imparting the knowledge of how to read the book into her. As you read this, you will come to learn fear as I have. You too would come to understand. I'd be like, Grandpa, that's a cool watch. hidden room you have there. To think that once I could not see beyond the veil Dude, of Dude, I feel reality. so bad for Pius Augustus. Who dwell behind yeah, he literally didn't... I Every time My I play this game, I'm like, he didn't ask for this. He didn't... Well, it's true. So, Pius Augustus, I'm not going to show this off, but he has a, a one-of-a-kind unique death screen where the other characters, when they die, uh, will talk about how uh, darkness prevailed and the two minutes from darkness uh, is in the... Uh, like the foreground but if you die as augustus they'll basically say that he he couldn't be found in the, the sands of persia and the uh like the artifacts of the ancients to wait uh, for another bearer to come so like augustus is just a pawn he, he doesn't really matter it's just someone finding the, the ancient and starting the whole conflict off that it really exists century i do not doubt our emperor's beliefs but like, what did Pius Augustus do? Like, he even he was nice there. He was like, check on the people, make sure they have water, make sure they're good. He, he's a good guy. He, he just got screwed. The only thing he did wrong was that he touched the the ancient artifact. Okay. Game's graphical sty style. Reminds me an awful lot of uh, time splitters for some reason. Like every time I see the characters' faces, I'm like time splitters. Yeah, sort of like time splitters mixed with, like you said, an indigo prophecy. Yeah. Back when games had, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna pull the old good, new bad, because I do like a lot of new games. I'm still playing Resident Evil 4 Remake because of the DLC. But back when games had, each game had unique style, because it wasn't about being as ultra-realistic as possible, it was about having, like, a cool, stylized look. And even though this back then would be considered, like, realistic, they didn't have the power to make it like, oh, that looks like a human being. Like, that looks exactly... We used a mocap guy to set this up, you know what I mean? Like, that wasn't a thing. And that's kind of lame, because stylized graphics for me is always, always better. A lot of leads into the dark heart, blah, blah, blah. Should Pius climb down. So Pius is the ultimate chat, because he's the only character with no sanity bar. So he does not care about these zom yeah, zombies. Yeah, I guess, I mean... There's zombies. He's probably the most trained one so you f you play as oh i want to say maybe seven or eight different people you play as one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven you play as 12 characters wow and they range anywhere from somebody who has like absolutely no combat experience to pretty well uh pious has a lot of combat experience there's a guy you play later who's a Fireman, I want to say, and he has clearly a lot of experience. Yeah, he never gets tired, but sometimes you play as like literally like just a monk, and like obviously the monk is gonna have like very little uh, stamina and like non-existent HP. And that's really cool that it uh, it shows it shows that all off. But yeah, the uh, fire guy, which is literally the last chapter in the game, um, other than Alex, uh, he is like the ultimate chad. And then you play some in the middle, like you play as a Maximilian, uh, Royvis, yeah, who's like kind of in between. No, he's pretty bad. He's he's fat. He's probably the slowest character in the game, other than possibly uh, Roberto, which you probably don't remember because the chapter barely matters. But Roberto also really sucks. I just like how every single character has different attributes, yeah. whether it's being fast or being slow. And as you would us. hope, uh, Alex is like a top tier character, probably yeah. one of the best, probably the best. Some have more uh, stamina, some have more health, 
some have more uh, sanity, so it's really cool. And it all makes perfect sense. Like, when you play as, like, uh, Brother Luther, who's just a regular monk, he has no health. He has a pretty good amount of magic, I guess. Being spiritual gives you magic. That part doesn't make a whole ton of, like, a lot of cool sense, but it doesn't matter. So this is kind of teaching you Pius, about... you must prove yourself. Yeah, it's fine. It kind of is teaching you about the uh, the targeting thing. So if you move your uh, analog stick when you're holding R, you can attack different things. And this is very essential for the entire game. The combat in this game is simple, but very satisfying. And it works pretty well. As you'll see with Trev, he'll... Uh press um he'll usually get like an average enemy's head off first so that even though the enemy's still alive it uh has a much harder time attacking i'm just uh uh enjoying my time with no sanity so we don't have to like kill everything yeah although sanity isn't like a huge deal but it's so like... when you came here uh press b for a sec when you came here originally in the first playthrough you get to choose any three Trev did the green one first in our yeah. playthrough a million So this years is ago. the uh, Zelototh, who's a green god. The blue one is Ulyoth, Ulyoth. who has the uh, veil of mysticism or something. And we're going to pick Chaturga. No, Pius, no! Just don't touch it! I don't know, if I saw some random thing just randomly floating... I just don't know if I would touch it. I'd be like, nope. Yeah. I mean, obviously it's video games, so you have to do it. But and you might just be like compelled. Like, you can tell that the 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 god is already like kind of manipulating his mind. And this creates the big baddie. And just to put in perspective, how long the plot of this game takes. This happens in 26 BC, and at current day is 2000 AD. Eons have passed. Crazy. So literally a little and bit more than two months. Yeah. Much. Chaturga's power filled me, invigorating my dead body. With a touch, I could level Dude, buildings. Dude, the voice acting in this game is so good. And channel power such as mortal men could only dream. Face me, and you shall surely perish. He's like, mm. yeah. uh... Pius's uh, voice actor is Richard Dole, who uh, also did like Big Boss and MGS4. So he's like a very accomplished voice oh, actor. Oh wow! The Binding of the Cro I think this is one of my least favorite ones. I really don't like the. Um, I cannot say what was the true beginning. The well, temple sure levels. I think it's called Anchor Tom. So perhaps here is um, the best place. To which start. is actually a real place in I Cambodia. Uh, there's some made-up places in this, like the monastery is a made-up place, but Anchor Tom in Cambodia is a real a place. Study in magic and religion. We are overwhelmed by a very Another thing to note about this game is that even though we play as twelve characters, it does not happen chronologically. Since uh, Augustus Pius is obviously the beginning because that's twenty six BC. But for example, we're playing as Elia right now, and this is happening in eleven fifty AD. And chronologically it's the fourth character in the chronology. So the Tomb of Eternal Darkness kind of exists outside like time and dimension. Um, this is one of the My very few characters outside of the Roivises where she starts with the tomb, uh, which is very unusual. No other characters like this. Wait, I'm sorry, what's, what's, uh, unusual? She starts with the Tomb of Eternal Darkness, where ah. every other character except for the Roivises does not start with it. You always get warped to Mantarok's dimension to get it. So, she might have just done it off-screen, it's hard to tell. The other thing that's eluded in this game is that um, a letter in Maximilian's um, chapter, uh, Maximilian's father says something about how the tomb that the Roivises has is actually a copy, and the characters, all the other characters, the non Roivises, when they transfer to the Mance Rock dimension, get the true eternal darkness, but it doesn't really matter. Hmm. But that's why the Roy business always has it, and why it can, like, jump all over the place for the other characters. Ooh. 
Sorry, uh, Elder God. Yeah, this is Mantarok. And Mantarok's the fourth one, right? Yeah, I guess so. He's not really a player in this game, except he is a player in this game, but not just, he's not an active player, he's more of a passive player. Rut row. Good thing about Elia is that she's fast, although she kind of has crappy stamina. And the character info, like the biography about this, uh, Elia is actually a slave who is, um, who doesn't know how to read, who, uh, it kind of shows that even if you're illiterate, you can read the Tomb of Eternal Darkness if Mantrock deems it. That's cool. Mantrock kind of, like, manipulates the fate of all the characters, including the Ravises, to, like, it's, it's really cool how it works out. No! So the main reason I don't why I hate the temple levels is all these uh, traps and like a lot of the level design for every single time that you're using it is going through like hallways. Right. Yeah, it's definitely I I, I would feel most people's uh, least favorite. Story wise, it's important, yeah. but otherwise, it's not bad. Like I like this. Like it has a very specific feel to it, and I love. Uh, Kind of like the Indiana Jones kind of vibe to it. So essentially, when a creature sees you, your sanity goes down. Yeah. And uh, when you finish off a creature, like he just did, you get sanity back. So sanity is a pretty annoying uh, mechanic. Now, luckily, because we're playing as Triturga, the first room we get is the recessive one. Uh, that's not good against uh, the the dominant um, god that you pick. So Chaturga is weak against the blue god, which is Uliath. But the first room we get is the the recessive one, which would be Zalatoth, which is the green one. So luckily we're gonna have uh, Sandy heal like recovery spells like as soon as possible. But overall, I think Chaturga is like definitely the hardest playthrough. Uh, Chaturga's demons are way stronger they do two times the uh about of like damage to anything and they also have i swear like four times the uh hp so it's a very bulky dangerous playthrough whereas uh i think zelotov's the easiest because uh her gimmick is sanity but you have so many options to heal your sanity but if you go into a room with like two red horrors, which are like the, the big guys, we I, I don't think we see on this chapter, but they're the most dangerous, and you can just die so easily. Those sound effects, though. So we got a bronze necklace, and he probably wants to put it where that other necklace was. Oh yeah, folks. Yeah, I'm not sure if I actually need to pick up the. Uh this necklace, uh, which gives us it, it has ten charges of Chaturga's uh, healing magic I think we could just skip it and then go over here but we still need to go into the room where the uh, the bronze necklace is anyway because we have to do the, the sun puzzle so you're not actually like saving time or anything, but I'd imagine that the speedrun probably just ignores the uh, the necklace can you skip cutscenes in this game? You can after you finish a game once. Oh, okay. Because so I was going to say, that would be the worst. My second playthrough? So the kind of annoying thing is that since, you know, like, uh, Pius um, serves a different god each playthrough, um, any cutscene that's unique where he's talking to the new god, you can't skip because you haven't seen it before. Ah. Yeah, Elia has, like, absolutely no sanity either. Yay! Puzzle. Puzzle. Oh yeah, folks, it went down. That does that one go about way? Yeah. Oh yeah. Man, it's so hard to uh to to see when you're going down if you're gonna be stepping on those uh Ooh the blow, blow There's gun. a blow gun. You need to take it even though it sucks. Somehow that broke steel. 
I guess it's iron. Also, funny. somehow, she landed on her feet and was like, yep. I'm fine. Man, how do you do Chaturga zombies with the blowgun? It was brutal. Ninety-seven. Holy crap! Yeah, but we get our sword back as long as the the zombies don't kill this guy. We can get our sword back. Oh my god, they are so bulky. Idiot. If we were doing Zelototh, they would have like fell over in like literally two seconds. Shoot one last one of them. <laughs> the guard is grateful for Elias saving his life. In return, he offers to repair Elias broken weapon. I suggest drink that's no. yes, please. This is the first time you see someone use Mantarox runes, and the Mantarox rune is completely optional and it's easy to miss. But the Mantarok Room is also the best by far. Mantarok, Pargon, Pargon, Pargon. <laughs> Just Pargon. Ah, uh, much better. Yeah, a speedrun would actually be pretty interesting because you have to, like, I feel like you constantly would be at pretty low sanity. It would also be kind of RNG dependent because sanity can't really kill you, but it can waste your time. Ah, yeah. Uh, the only time when sanity can, like, kill you is, do you remember the enemies that burrow into, like, people's skin? Um, even if your health is at 100%, if your sanity is, like, below, like, 25%, if those, uh, I think they're called, like, bone diggers or something like that, uh, if they, like, grab you when your sanity is really low, you just instantly die. Wow. So that's one time that sanity can screw you over, but otherwise it's mostly just wasting your time. But it's still really cool. You can see blue and red fighting each other, because they don't like each other. Because yeah. they're being, uh, controlled by their version of the god, the red, blue, and green. And the generic gray zombies are actually Mantarok zombies, so they're also aligned. I never really thought of it, but this game definitely gives, like, Lovecraft vibes. Oh, yeah. In so this much the Elder Gods are like, you know, all, they only use uh, humans to suit their needs yeah. so they can fight each other. And heavy sanity uh, themes. It's just, it's very blatantly inspired by Lovecraft. How the mighty have fallen. But I'm really glad that they made up their own stuff instead of being like, ah, oh, Lovecraft's everything that's been used a 10,000 times. Oh no, Cthulhu. I'm, I like, I'm losing my mind! I like uh, Lovecraft's lore, but it's been just done to death. And mostly really bad. Uh, Mantarok? Also, the start of this chapter, Elia was like, I really wish something would happen to me, fool. It's like, okay, here's your cool thing, Elia. You get to suffer for centuries. It is now your destiny to fight the eternal darkness. So this character is weird. Uh, this character never shows up again. I think it's just an avatar from Mantarok, but I'm not 100% sure what. Looks kind of like that one, uh, that one guy you play as in the monastery. Anthony. I do, I really don't think so, because Anthony's chapter does take place like three centuries before this, but Anthony gets, uh, trapped in the cathedral and dies there. Oof. But yeah, I, I definitely think that this is just some sort of avatar of Mantarok. Maybe he's just, like, uh, controlling some dead corpse. Give me that metal stuff. By the way, this is a game that, uh, if you don't like it where bad things happen to, like, good people slash the protagonist, oh boy, you are in for a bad time. Yeah. Uh... Everything bad happens to everyone. So many characters get super screwed. 
And uh, a couple survive, but not many. Of the twelve characters, eight of them die. Yeah, I know. I can think of one off the top of my head that does. Survives, that is. But it's also been a very long time. It's pretty much all the characters that uh, are relevant in the, the current century. Although Edward dies, so it's not all of them. Do you count Maximilian in that? No, Maximilian uh, definitely dies, and he's in the seventh. Uh, he's in the 18th century. Oh, oh, I just meant like during your playthrough or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I wasn't listening. What'd you say? Like, like during your playthrough, like um, uh, brother Luther or whatever gets BTFO'd and stuff like that. Oh yeah. yeah. I understand that like Maximilian was in like the 1700s. I get, I get that, but. Yeah, most of the characters just, like, die horrible deaths. Yeah, yeah, that, that was more of that. Like, obviously this character would not still be alive, you know. 